CSIS 2440 is filmed before a live studio audience. So here we are in regular expression right here. That's the lecture for today. And if we go in here, we made a couple links for us. We'll get to these in a minute. These are some functions that we're going to use in PHP. But meanwhile, there's a few resources right here. Okay. And we're going to start with the testing ground right here. This is a website where you can put in some text and then you can use regular expression to search through it. So if you want to go here and, and click it, you can. But I'm going to be using a humongous text file I created with a bunch of text in it. This is the kind of thing where you're probably better off watching because if you're just trying to copy, it's going to get really messy really quick. Okay. So let's start off here in this little text file bunch of words and phrases and sentences and everything okay and also one other thing I'll quickly show you there is a PDF right here that you can use anytime you want and I'm actually using it here as a cheat sheet to make sure I stay on top of it and I don't miss anything I want to cover but it, it has a really nice breakdown of regular expression and the different things that you can use to make it work all right so let's go over here and the first thing we're going to look at is where you can search for and find just an individual character. Okay? So if you use the dot, that means literally find anything. That's the wild card. Okay? Now, we're usually used to the asterisk for the wild card, right? Well, we're, in this case, for regular expression, it's a dot. So part of what you're probably wondering is what is regular expression? What's it for? What's its purpose? This was invented in 1951. This is old. It was in uh, Unix-based systems. And I mean, 1951 is six years after World War I ended, or World War II ended, I meant. All right, I mean, that's a long time ago. Computers were barely a thing, okay? So this has been around, and there's a link in there if you want to check out the history of it. But the idea is it's to look for patterns. Search through a string of text or a document of text and find patterns. And right now, you can see that putting a dot there it highlighted every individual letter. That's why the coloring is uh, alternating with blue and light blue, because it's found each individual one of those. At the very top of the page there, it found H, and then it found also A, it also found P, it also found the other P, right? All right. If I want to find just only a single digit, backslash D, and this, the cheat sheet has all these things that I'm telling you that you can download backslash D. So if you look, it searched through this document and it found all the single digits. Those phone numbers and then Beavis or uh, Butthead's phone or email address has 42 in it. So it found the four and the two. All right. If I wanted to find, say, only cases where there's exactly two digits in a row, another slash D again. So now this is only finding where I have exactly two digits. That's why you'll notice here that this 80, for example, is not alternating colors. It's found both. It's found a slash D and a slash D. Okay? Or how about three digits? Okay? Or four, whoops, four digits. Now it's only finding those. So that whole string that's in the top part where it says regular expression up there, that whole thing is it's looking for that exact pattern. What is that pattern? Digits. Single, four, exactly four individual digits, right? Now, you'll find this is pretty common that whenever there's a slash something, there's also the uppercase version of it, which is the opposite of the lowercase. So in other words, that is anything that's not a digit. That's backslash capital D. It's anything that's not a digit, okay? And as you can see, it's selected everything on that page except for digits. And again, this is one character at a time. It's selecting every individual character. Okay? This is all character based. It's not strings. It's characters. All right? So the second one, and again, uh, I'll probably say this five more times, but this the, you can print this out right from the lecture notes. It's a cheat sheet that has a list of all these and a little explanation, so it's pretty straightforward to follow. So slash W, with too many slashes, finds word characters. What do you suppose non-word characters would be? Capital W, slash capital W, right? So it finds all the non-word characters, which is spaces, asterisks, periods, um, numbers, dashes, hyphens, all that stuff. Anything that's not a word character, 
right? So if I wanted to find a word that was exactly four letters long, or at least four letters in a row, if I want to find a whole word, we'll talk about that in a minute. But this is a block, this is looking for a block of four letters in a row, which is why the word up is not selected, but the C-U-R-R -R is on the second line there, okay? All right, let's take a look at the next one. White space, or just a space, right? A lowercase s, again, all these are prefaced with a slash, right? A slash, lowercase s, and it's a backslash. And this will find every single instance of a single space. If I have, like, double spaces, two spaces in a row, and that's that looks like just the end of the line stuff there, where there's probably maybe the way I made my text file, I put space, space at the end of joy or something. I'm not exactly sure why that's highlighting that whole row, frankly. It's a, uh, well, I don't know. Space, oh, yeah, carriage return does show up as white space. Yeah, you're right. Because notice, this is not the space thing. Slash S is not the space. It's white space, okay? And white space is a lot of things, okay? Tab, spaces, carriage returns, and so forth. Now, what do you suppose not white space is? Capital S. Well, yeah, it's everything else, but it's, it's the capital S. Exactly right. So every single individual letter, every single number, dash, symbol, all of that is not white space. Okay. So those are all single characters. All right. The next thing we're going to look at is what is called sets, where you can do sets of, of parameters. All right. So take, for example... Let's go with uh, the sets go inside of square brackets. Okay, so those are square brackets up there. I know the highlighting is a little wonky, but that's a set of square brackets. Inside the square brackets, let's say I want to look for the letter A or the letter S. This scenario is not looking for as, right? Can you see that? Is it big enough? It's not looking for as. It's looking for an A or an S or a D or an F. Not an ASDF, but one of those. It's looking for one of those. Okay? So inside this set, I'm saying, here's a set of four letters. Find any one of those individually. There's no commas to separate. You just stick them all together. And so you'll notice, like in the Happy, Happy, Joy, Joy there, the A is highlighted. In uh, Dave Mustaine, you got the A and the S. And, and then in Bruce Dickinson, you got the S. Hetfield, you got the D, right? It's only looking for those individual letters. So this can be useful in finding phone numbers. All right? And eventually, we're going to learn how to stick this in our PHP code and, and validate to say, hey, is this actually a legitimate phone number pattern? Right? What's a phone number pattern look like? And, and let's just stick with uh, you know, the US and not having to deal with country codes for a minute. What's a, what's a pattern look like for a phone number? Three digits. Some separator, right? Sometimes it's a space, could be a dash, could be a period. Could be an underline uh, or an underscore, but typically it's a dot or a dash, right? But some separator, then three more digits, three more digits, and then some separator, and then four more digits, right? All right, well, let's look at that. So I want, let me find the phone numbers actually in the text field right here. We're going to see if we can find those, okay? So three di dashes, or three digits, and then I'm going to do my square braces where, I, let, let's start with just a dash, right? Then a dash. Right, and it found a dash, no problem. Three more, dash, four more. So that will find, and notice the whole phone number is highlighted because that, that whole phone number matches that pattern that I have up there, okay? But it didn't catch the underscore, it didn't catch the dot, right? So we're gonna do a set. Instead of a dash, we're gonna do a dash inside of the square brackets and also a dot as in a period and then we're gonna come over here dash dot and now it's saying look for in fact i'm going to copy this real quick if it'll let me i don't know if it'll let me let's see if it copied it or not it's a little easier to see it in a tech yeah okay it's a little easier to see it there so this is give me any string that matches the following pattern. Three single digits in a row, followed by either a dash or a dot, 
followed by three single digits in a row, followed by either a dash or a dot, followed by four single digits in a row. Now, yeah. Yes, yeah, the question was, can you look for a white space in the square brackets? So let's update this here and go with uh, 801. What's your phone number, Rachel? <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. We're going to put it on YouTube. for. It's going to be on YouTube, right? Uh, yeah, 555-1212. Okay, 1212, right? All right, so now we're doing it with spaces, okay? So we would look for, now you could just do, let, let's see what happens if you put a space. Okay, let's try that first. Okay, we're just putting a space there as a character. So now it's going to, theoretically, we'll see, theoretically, a dash, dot, or a space. One of those three. Okay, let's paste it here. And there you go. It's a character, right? So it found it. Now, you could, as you pointed out, look for white space. And it also finds it, because that is white space, right? So either one of those is fine. I recommend going the white space route, because a single space, you can't see it, right? When you type it, you can't really see it, right? All right, so we're going to, we'll leave the space in there, might as well. Then we're going to also look for an asterisk. And we're going to look for underscores as well. Now, already look at this, man. This is like messy. What is this? Right? But this will find every phone number that I have listed here at, uh, at the moment. Right there. Okay? Yeah. If you had the parentheses, would you put a set in the front of the number as well? Yeah, or so. Just look for a parentheses and then a set. Yeah, so the question is, what if you have parentheses? Like the old way that we used to see phone numbers all the time, they didn't, we don't see this very much anymore, but it would look like this. 801, and maybe a space, maybe not. Um, let's go with a space, 999, 1111. You'd see that a lot, or you'd see a variation of that here without the space, right? The way to solve that is something we haven't covered just yet. We're going to get to in about five or ten minutes. So I'm going to leave that there, and we'll, we'll look at how to deal with that in just a minute. But yet you're on the right track, right? So we'll look at that in a second. But anything that doesn't have, it's just got the pattern of three digits, some separator, three digits, some separator, and then four digits, we're going to find it with this, okay? All right. So any questions so far? Other questions? These are great questions. Next up, let me check the notes here, make sure I don't forget. Uh, yeah, okay. So now, here's another thing you can use the brackets for. Okay. I showed you already that I could search for a dash or a dot or a underscore or whatever, and it'll find all of those. Maybe we'll throw in an at symbol in there. At symbol, okay. What you can also do is at the very beginning of the brackets, put a caret. The thing above the six that you use for exponents, right? And what this means is find anything that's not in the square brackets, right? So now it's finding everything that's not a dot or a line or an underscore or an at symbol. And as you can see, it's not highlighting the at symbol there. It's not highlighting the dashes there. It's not highlighting the periods there or any of the white spaces or anything like that, okay? Well, the white spaces would be, but because they're not in the brackets, okay? Make sense? What if I wanted to find an actual carrot? Right? How would I do that? Yeah, so let's go, let's back up here. I think I have a carrot in here somewhere. Yes, right here in this, this math equation. Metallica times Maiden times Megadeth equals M time AM to the third power, which is metal to the third power. Should be that metal, right? So raise the third. So I want to find that. Well, I could start off just like this, okay? And it doesn't seem to do anything, right? Because it has a special meaning. Carrot has a special meaning. What if I put it in the brackets? Well, it's saying don't find the stuff that's in the brackets. Well, there's nothing in the brackets, so it's just kind of sitting there, right? What if I escaped it? There we go, okay? On this handout, there's a list of things you'll have to escape, okay? Hopefully, uh, in JavaScript, you guys cover escaping, okay? 
Does anybody not know what I'm talking about with escaping? We're all good with that? Okay, if, if, if you're not, then that, we can cover it, but it looks like everybody's okay with that. So we're escaping the, that, that carrot, and it's going to find the carrot, right? So what if I wanted to find everything that's not a carrot? What would you do? Yeah, carrot, escape, carrot, right? So this can, you can see how this stuff can build and quickly get like crazy out of hand, right? Okay, and wait till we're gonna look at some that are nuts. Okay, we're gonna build a few too. Okay, so let, let, me, let me look at my set, my notes here about sets. There's one other thing we're gonna look at here, which will help us a little bit later today, and that's groups. Okay, groups, you put in parentheses, and for example, I, let's say I put happy in parentheses. That will just find the instance of any instance of happy. Now, you also know I can get happy like that without the parentheses. Okay, putting the parentheses on it helps us to be able to do some useful replacing things, which is what's going to be useful for our palindrome thing where we want to replace all the punctuation with nothing. Right, so the parentheses are going to come in handy later, so we'll come back to those. But right now, if I wanted to find happy, I can find it like that, okay? It is case sensitive, yeah. So happy is not the same thing as as capital happy, yeah. It's they're all characters on the binary level. You're looking at the, the raw, like the actual ASCII value of them. All right, now uh, there's so that's we looked at individual characters where we just did uh, slash D slash W slash S, right? Digits, non digits, word characters, non word characters, and um, white space and non white space. Also note real quick, word characters, word characters will pick up numbers too. It's words, it's words and numbers, okay? Because you could have a number in a, in a word, in a sentence, basically. That's the idea, okay? Anything that you could use in a sentence that's not the punctuation, you, you could have that there. Now, you could argue, well, I might have a sentence with an asterisk, right? But the definition is words and, or sorry, characters, like numbers and letters, basically. That's it, okay, for a slash W. Okay, individual characters, sets, we looked at that. Let's take a look at uh, this other idea. They're called um, anchors. Anchors are a little weird. The first one is the slash B, lowercase b, okay? And what the slash B is, is it's what's called a boundary, a word boundary, okay? A word boundary, what, what do you suppose a word boundary is? Say again? Yeah, anything that, that you visually looking at it would know, oh, this is clearly separating it from, it's a word, right? So it's the beginning of a sentence, uh, it's the end of a sentence, is the end of a, a boundary, uh, a space in between it, something like that. Those are word boundaries. So if I wanted to find the scenario where happy exists, capital H, happy, but I want to find it only in the situation where it's at it's a separate word. It's not part of another word. So in other words, happy. Notice it did not, on line three there, it did not select the second happy. Because that's not, there's no word boundary there. Right? It selected the first happy because what I did, slash B says, find a word boundary. It found one, start of a line. And then it said, immediately after that, look for capital H A P P Y. Okay? Notice also that the first line is selected both happies because it found a word boundary, new beginning of the line, then it found happy. Then there's a comma, then it found another word boundary, which is the space there before the word happy. Dig it? Yeah, so in the case of line two, the bracket there, it's also a word boundary because it's the very beginning of, the, of a character. Of a, of a word, or a, when I said character, I meant letter, sorry, of a letter. Yeah, it's the very beginning of a letter. So it's the very beginning of the word. It's clearly the beginning based on that. So it's ignoring the, that, yeah, it's ignoring the brackets. All right, there's also a capital B, which would be not a word boundary, which is going to find the other happy there, because that's a happy that doesn't have a word boundary at the beginning of it, okay? And again, remember, this is individual things one at a time. It's literally looking for 
a situation that's not a word boundary, which if I back up, that's all over the place, right? There's all kinds of places that are not word boundaries. Find a word boundary, look immediately next to it for a capital H, and then immediately after that H, look for an A, then look for a P, then look for a P, then look for a Y, and you'll find that, okay? Okay, that's, that's one situation, but you can also say, like, let's look for joy, which we found. Then following joy, I want to find a word boundary. So now this is saying, give me every scenario where that has a capital J, followed immediately by an O, followed immediately by a Y, followed immediately by some sort of word boundary. As you can see on line one, the word boundary is that comma there. And the word boundary on the last joy there is the end of the, the sentence. Same with the joy joy on the third line. Okay. Good. Yes, so if I did, let's go back to the happy here. So I had this, and I'll find the middle happy, but if I have a word boundary at the beginning, then it will not find that happy happy because the, the, the thing we have in our regular expression says find a word boundary followed by immediately a capital H, A, P, P, Y, followed immediately by a word boundary, and there's no scenario where that exists. Uh, well, there is those three that are highlighted, but the scenario that says happy happy, that does not exist, right? That condition doesn't exist, okay? Now, there's also another sort of uh, anchor here. Is It's the caret again, okay? The caret means something different when it's outside of the brackets. This is why regular expression is hard, okay? Caret outside of the brackets means it's the beginning of a line, and you can see all the little pink along the side there. It's the beginning of a string, I should say. Okay, it's the beginning of a string. So if I start typing this, then it's finding the first line that says happy, comma, happy, and it's finding the third line that says happy, happy. Because what did I look for? I looked for a scenario where this is the beginning of the string, followed by a capital H, followed by an A, by a P, by a P, and by a Y. Dig it? All right. You can also do end of line, which is the dollar sign. Okay? So I can say happy, and then if I put a dollar sign, there is no condition where that's met. There's no scenario where it has a capital H followed by the rest of the word happy, followed immediately by the end of a string. Now there's places where there's a word boundary, but not the end of a string, okay? If I were to put joy there, we would have that scenario, right? Joy is the end of those two strings. Or I simply this, just an N in a string. That gives me Maiden and Dickinson and, and Burton down there, okay? We're going to take a quick little pause here and tangent for just a minute before we cover the next subject. You look in something like Notepad++, and I want to do a search. Notice here in my search, I can actually use regular expression right here. I can use regular expression, and whatever I put there, it'll search for that pattern. So this is everywhere. Sublime Text has this feature. In fact, Sublime Text has built into it like a real-time thing like this page here where I can open up a little command thing in Sublime Text and search real time for patterns, right? This is used on the command line in Linux. You can do this kind of stuff. You can write Linux shell scripts and do this. Uh, you can, it's used everywhere. It's, and pretty much every programming language will have a function that can take in as a parameter a regular search, a regular expression pattern and compare it to a string and then tell you if it matched or it can say to replace things in there. There's all kinds of cool stuff. We're going to deal with that in a minute. But I just want to point that out. This regular expression is not just here. If you're familiar with, like if you're more of a server person, I'm not a huge server guy, but there's a file called the HT access file on servers. You can use regular expression there for redirecting your URLs and all kinds of stuff, okay? All right, so next thing, we're going to look at quantifiers, right? What's a quantifier do, like just in English terms? What's it sound like it does? Yeah, it counts. It gives a spe specified number of things. So, for example, one of the quantifiers is you can put a number in curly braces, three. What that means is, let's take a look here. I want to find a digit, right? So let's go down here. 
it's finding a bunch of single digits, but I want to find exactly three of them in a row. So that is the same thing, sorry, slash D. This is the same thing as that, okay? So I could replace this right here, replace that, replace that, and replace that, and put a four there. And this is the same pattern. This will find our phone numbers, just like it did before. Oh, did I? What did I copy? Extra? Oh, yep, nice. Sorry about that. Well, I copied too much. I deleted too much, so I missed the dash and the period there. All right. Oh, yep. Yeah, went too far. Okay, there we go. Thanks. Oh, and looking. There we go. So that will find our phone numbers there, okay? So that's one little shortcut you can do. You can also do situations, let's go over to here, where I can say something like 4, 9, which will mean anywhere from 4 to 9 of these, okay? So you could do this. This would not be ideal, but you could do this. I'll tell you why this is a bad idea in a second, but you could do this. This will actually work, okay? It'll find the numbers because it's found anywhere from three to four digits, followed by those things in the brackets, followed by anywhere from three to four digits, followed by things in the brackets, followed by any, uh, by four digits. What's wrong with that though? Yeah, I could have a phone number that's 8019 dash something and it would still show up here, which is invalid, right? Uh, so I could have 99999 dash 99999 dash 99999, and that will actually show up as a valid phone number because I said it could be three, up to three or four, right? So, but I just want to show you how that worked. There are scenarios where that's useful, okay? Well, no, that's what that means. That means no more. It means minimum three, no more than four. Well, first and second, by saying like overall, no more than 10. So if someone did. Oh, the whole ten, string is no more than 10? Uh, you, would not, you wouldn't want to do that. You'd want to do it per blocking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that one quantifier. Now, let's take a look here at the other ones. There's a couple more. And let me just put them on this page here. There's the. Asterisk, the plus, and the question mark, okay? The asterisk means either zero or more. That's what we're used to the asterisk meaning in programming languages, right? It's the wild card. It means zero or more of them, right? So what's the difference between that and a dot? Remember I told you earlier the dot means everything? Technically, the dot means anything, <laughs> Not everything, it means anything, and it means any individual thing, right? So, for example, I could, if I wanted to, do this. Dot. Dot. What does that mean? Three digits followed by literally anything. One thing, but just one of them, but literally anything followed by three digits, followed by literally anything. So if it's a space, a dash, a hyphen, a period, or whatever, it'll find it. Now, if it's another number, it'll also find that, right? So this isn't the best solution either, but that, that's what that would mean, okay? Feeling okay about that? All right, so let's go back to the way that was. Okay, the dot means just find every instance of every single, of any given character. The asterisk is, is counting, okay? It's counting. So in other words, I'm saying, let's go down here. I think I have a scenario where I have some, yeah, these names here, okay? Let's look at, let me find a better one. Um, yeah, we'll use that, that's fine, okay? So I wanna find all these guys here, Mr. Crowley, Mr. Brownstone, Mr. E, Miss Jackson, if you're nasty, Mrs. Robinson, these are all song titles, guys. Mr. Roboto, Mr. Jones, and me. So they all start with a capital M, right? Easy, put a capital M up there. 
Some of them start with an R or have an R next. Some of them have an S. We'll deal with that in a minute. All right. Let's just look at the misters first because they're easy. So MR, easy. But now look what's up. We have a period. Right? But sometimes we don't have a period. Like Mr. Brownson doesn't have a period. Well, first of all, I want to find the actual period, not just, quote, anything. Right? I want to find a period. So we can escape it get a period, but now I missed Mr. Brownstone, right? Well, I want to say for the periods, I can have zero or one of them. There's either zero periods or one period. The operator for that or the quantifier for that is the question mark. So now it's saying, give me a capital M, like a cheerleader, give me an R, <laughs> okay? Then give me a period, like an actual period, not period meaning everything, but an actual period. And that actual period, I can have zero or one of them. That's the question mark there. Okay? So that is this right here. So now that we're going to deal with the misses and the, and the ms in a minute. Okay? But now what's next? I'm looking for what? A white space, right? So a space, just one. Then I'm looking for a capital letter. Well, remember the brackets where I, I had the brackets and I could put, you know, capital A, B, C, D. I could put, and it'll only find one of those. Well, obviously, we can just do A through Z. Uh, and so we don't have to type that out. So A through Z. That means any capital letter A through Z. Okay. What's immediately following that? Any, well, what, it could be an uppercase letter, too, theoretically, right? The name like um, O'Reilly or something, and they'd left off the apostrophe. We'll deal with the apostrophe another time, but something like that. But there are names where the first two letters are capitalized. So what I want is just any word character. Maybe you have a number in your name. I don't know. Maybe you're a robot. <laughs> right? So slash W... Okay, well, that's, I meant lowercase w. But now look at what happened there. We just lost Mr. E, right? So what do we want to say? Well, I want to say after the capital letter, there can be zero words, letters, word characters, or infinite number of them. That's the asterisk. That's what the asterisk is, zero or more. So I said... And I'll, I'll put this in the text editor again so we can look at it a little more closely. So if we wanted, for instance, to address if there was two capital letters to put an asterisk after the A to Z to show if there's more than one. Well, this is only, unless you specify, it's always one. If I'm right. going to put a quantifier after. If I put the quantifier, the which quantifier? The asterisk. The asterisk would mean it would be zero capital letters or one capital letter. Or, or many capital letters. Well, that's what I mean. So like, yeah. you know, it would then pull up O'Reilly at that point. Yes, yeah. It would pull up something that has two capital letters in a row. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go back to this scenario, though. So here we're saying, give me an M, a capital M, an R, followed by a period. And that period, that thing that I just wrote, I can have zero or one of them, followed by a space, followed by a capital letter, followed by any word character, and that word character that I just wrote, there can be zero or many of them. That's what we've got so far. All right. That actually covers all the misters. <laughs> what about the misses? Okay. Well, you can actually use the, there's an or operator, right? So you can do this. I can say, give me an M or, oh, sorry, give me an M, R, or an S, right? But the problem is that it's going to look for, it's not going to quite work unless we put this in a group marker, which is the parenthesis here, like so. So now notice Miss Jackson has been chosen. So the parenthesis there says, give me an R or an S or an RS, All right? So let's look at that. Here's the final version here, okay? Give me a capital M, then give me one of these three patterns here, 
either an R or an S or an RS. Follow whatever that is by either zero or one period, followed by a space, followed by exactly one capital letter, followed by either zero or many word characters. And that will pick up all the Mr. and Mrs. and Ms. and so forth, okay? Now, there are other scenarios you could probably contrive that, that we might have missed a person there, like you were talking about the, the hyphen. And actually, I think, let's just type Mr. O'Reilly there and see. Yeah, so he is missing his apostrophe. So we could put in there, let's just see if we can capture that. Right before the word character, we could put um, just any, we could put the apostrophe if we wanted to. That'd be a tricky one. Let me think about that. Because it's not a word character. Yeah, we have to explicitly put that. And we can have zero or one of them, right? So that would capture it. We could do that, okay? So that would mean we'd have to think through, are there other things like hyphenated last names, right? We'd have to have that kind of thing. And so, for example, what if the apostrophe was like there? I know that's weird, but what if it were there? Well, we got another problem, right? In fact, even if this were lowercase, that's still an issue. So how would we solve that? Well, you could you can say this. You could put another one of these cats. Let's put this on the over here. You could put another one of these guys right after the capital letter. Let's say that we're it has to be a capital letter. That's one of our rules. Okay? Followed by zero or many characters, followed by an apostrophe, zero or one of them, followed by zero or many characters. So that will give the scenario where it's immediately followed by the R, which is our W right here where my cursor is blinking, then the apostrophe, and then the rest of them. That should catch everything. And it does. Yes, if we put, yeah, the question was, can I put a hyphen right there? And that would catch hyphenated. That should catch them. So let's go with Ms. Love Hewitt. Is that, how do you spell her, say her name? Spell it? Oh, close enough. But it, it, it picked it up, right? Jennifer Love Hewitt, right? Is she Ms. or Mrs.? Which one is the married one? I forget. Mrs. Okay, well, which makes sense. I guess you tack an S to the Mr. I guess that makes sense. Okay. All right. So, anyway, I don't know if that applies today anymore. That stuff like from 50 years ago or whatever. But, <laughs> but it worked, right? It worked. That was the point. We're just trying to make these little se sections work here. Okay. So, this stuff is tricky, though, and you guys are asking some good questions. Uh, so, those are the quantifiers. All right. So, let's take a look at these email addresses down here. I want to just pull out of it just that part. I don't want to pull out the HTTPS. And there's, there's places where that's valid. If you're using PHP code to grab something out of a URL and you're getting a whole URL, and then you want to modify it so that you can just display the, the URL name and the dot whatever instead of having to display the HTTPS, there's, there's cases for that. You might want to do that. All right, so let's look up here. What's the first thing I'm going to type if I want to start looking for those, those emails? Yeah, HTTP. Whoops, P. Now what? Um, uh, not quite. It would be like an S asterisk. Yeah, so an S and not an asterisk because that would allow you to have many. Oh, sorry, right? question. question mark, which is zero or one. So... We put, that means I can have an HTTP, I have to have that. Then as far as the S goes, I can have zero or one, followed immediately by a colon, followed by slash slash. Now notice the slashes didn't appear. Yeah, you have to escape them, right? Because though, because those slashes mean something, right? So I can escape them. And get that. So you see how it starts to get out of control here, right? Okay. So that's one way to do it. You can also do it 
inside the square brackets. I think that'll work. No, I guess that won't work. So we, oh, wrong slash, yeah, thanks. Yeah, and that still doesn't work though. So you still have to escape that. Now, here's a weird thing. It depends on the language too. Like in PHP, you have to escape some things that you don't have to escape in Java. In Java, you have to escape everything, man. Every time you put a slash something, it throws an extra one on there for you automatically in, if you're using Eclipse. So we're gonna go with just escaping them, okay? Followed by www or not, right? So we're gonna put that in parentheses for reasons that'll become clear in a minute. But a www, there's gonna be either zero or one of those, dig it? And actually the dot would come along with the, for the right of the w's, right? Okay, so www dot. Followed by word characters, any number of them. And it should be, should it be zero or more? Should I use the asterisk there? Because that would be zero or more. One or more. I need one or more, right? Because you can't have www dot dot com, but there has to be something in there. So it has to be one or more, right? You could have, maybe there's some website called, you know, b.com. That's, that probably is a thing, right? So the one or more is the plus, okay? So I need one or more word characters followed by a literal dot, so I'm gonna escape it, followed by word character. What's the minimum for an extension? You'd have to look it up to see what the rules are for a URL, but we're just gonna assume that it's at least two. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, so escape W, escape W, that's at least two. And then, so it's, that's one. And then the second one, it's one or more of those. Good solution, very good. See that? Okay, that gets it. Now, here's the whole reason we care about all this. Okay, we wanna be able to search and replace. Step one, we just spent an hour or whatever talking about searching. Okay, now let's figure out how to replace. Well, we're gonna use a function in PHP to do that, but for now, there's actually a little tool right here on this page called substitution here, where you can put what you wanna replace right here, all right? So these parentheses, actually, the way they work, every group of parentheses in a, in a regular expression is actually assigned a variable. So this group of parentheses, that variable right there, its name is string one, or dollar sign one. That's its name. If this had parentheses around it, which this would cover, this is the actual URL name, that variable is called string two. And when I say string, in the 80s when I first learned to program, the dollar sign, you called it string. That was what its name was. That's, it was. That was the name of the dollar sign, it was called string, okay? So don't be thrown off by that. Followed by, Actually, we want to put the dot from the dot com or whatever in parentheses. So that would be called variable number three. They just go in order. First parentheses one, seconds two, and so forth. Why do we want to do that? Well, check this out. So we're searching for that. Now, down here in my replace, I want to, let's scroll down here. Actually, let's clean this up by getting rid of all this crap here. Stand by. I want to update my file that has all this stuff in it with some of the changes we made. Okay, so get that. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is just only have the URL so we don't have to scroll, okay? So now that's all we're looking at. So here's our, our search pattern here and we lost something. It's not finding everything now. What did we miss? Oh, that period there. Put the parentheses in the wrong spot. See that? That parentheses should go there and that should go there, which I don't need to escape it in the parentheses that it looks like, okay. There we go. So it's finding everything, right? The, the different colors now are representing the different groups. So I want to replace that whole string with just whatever variable one is. Variable one is the www if it exists. Or I want to replace it with whatever variable two is, which will be the name of the URL because that's what I put in the second set of parentheses. Well, I want to replace that whole thing with the second and third set of parentheses. Whoops, I don't know what happened there. So now I'm, I'm replacing this pattern with just this portion of the pattern, right to there. Let me do that in a text editor. I'm replacing, when I say this, I'm saying replace this entire pattern, anything that matches that, with just that part of it, right? 
So find all legitimate URLs and replace them with this. Okay, let's put this into action now. Let's put it into PHP, okay? Here we go. Let's start off, if you look in your lecture notes today, there are two functions here, preg match and preg replace. Let's take a look at the match. It goes right to the documentation and just look at this here and you can just grab it. It's an easy way to do this. And we don't need the optional variables for what we're doing today. So all we need is right there. That's it. That's all we need for today, okay? So quickly, we're gonna say, I'm gonna make a string here. This is, and by the way, line three is the actual syntax. It's not the actual way we're gonna write it. So I'm gonna make a string that's called, uh, it's a phone number, okay? And then I'm going to try to match that string here. So first we need the pattern. So inside of our quotes, we put the pattern. What's the pattern? We, we saw this one, slash D, curly three. I'm not gonna bother putting all the other things. We'll just put a dash, right? We'll just put a dash there. Followed by slash D, curly three, followed by slash or dash and four. Okay, that'll find phone numbers. Okay, I want to search for that pattern inside of that variable called string. Right, call it number, call it whatever you want. Now, I'm going to just simply say, if that is true, then echo yay, else echo boo. Simple enough, okay? Let's refresh, and we get this error, which I did on purpose, by the way, so don't panic. This is that moment where I told you it's different for every language, okay? And in PHP, you have to also add around your entire expression, forward slash here, and a forward slash here. So you, this, this forward slash, and then your expression goes inside of it, okay? And now we get a yay. Now let's just change it to make sure, like I'm gonna put a underscore there or something get a boo okay so that's matching so if you just want to look you would use this for data validation somebody enters a phone number you compare it to this pattern and say dude that's not a phone number retry it. try it again okay you can do that in JavaScript or in PHP okay all right so that's part one let's look at the next part though where I want to deal with replacing so again I've given this to you so you can just click on the preg replace function here takes you to here Grab this business. And by the way, if you don't know how to read this, take some time to study it and figure out how to read these so you understand how they work. But we don't, anything in square brackets is optional. We don't need any of that, okay? We're, we're gonna, for what we're doing today, all right? So we need to put a pattern here. We need to put the thing we're replacing the pattern with and then which string we're searching, all right? So let's start off easy. In fact, watch this. Well, we'll just do it. We got time. Okay. Let's just grab one of these here. Come over here real quick. Madam, I'm Adam. Okay. What am I looking for? Yeah, just some number of words, maybe. And then what? Some number of not words, right? That's really all I'm looking for because I want to, uh, now, but what I want to do is get rid of the non-words, right? And so I'm going to group those by the words here and the non-words here, right? And now I have variable one, variable two. Well, what do I want to do? I only want to display variable one. Behold, everything that's not a letter is gone. That's the entire regular expression. That's it. Now, I could have given that to you on day one because it's really simple, but you look at it like, what does this mean? We spent an hour talking about what it means, yeah. Is there a way to make it all lowercase? That's a, we use the two lower function in PHP for that. That's string two lower, yeah. So we're going to add this to our function in just a minute here. But I just want to show you, this is all we need for our regular expression here. So what we're going to do now and it'll work with every palindrome. I've already tested it, and we're going to prove that in a minute. 
I want to, here's my pattern. Don't forget your slash, your forward slash. There's the pattern, forward slash, close it. And my string right here, we'll put Adam, I'm Adam. And what is this? Actually, go back. This is the replacement. So what goes here is going to be dollar sign one. I think that has to be in quotes. Of course, it has to be in quotes. And then here is the string. Okay. So now we'll put Madam, I'm Adam here. Should not take me that long to type that. Oh my gosh. All right, here we go. And we didn't have it return anything, so let's just say echo that. And there you go. Okay? Now you can of course say echo string to lower. And then we get a fatal error. Lower. Yeah, I just got a little excited there. There you go. Right? And now you can even say echo str reverse that. And let's go ahead and uh, attack on a P here. And we'll put a line break here. And we'll put a closing paragraph tag here. Okay. And there we go. That's one way and the other way. Okay. It's well, it's, <laughs> yes, because I reversed it, right? All right. Okay. So let's just to pr prove the point, we'll put in here um, alley cats, <laughs> whatever, right, with an extra thing. So it took out the apostrophe and then it spelled about. I never realized the word Stacy was in there. And Aya, that's a Spanish word for she. Cats is, well, I did that on purpose because I had an apostrophe in there, right? Apostrophe, yes. But um, this is interesting that that's Stacy girl, <laughs> backwards, like if, if you use the Spanish. Weird. Anyway, never knew that. Okay, now, we did all this for one reason. One reason. A, as a programmer, you have to know this. This is a huge, most one of the most valuable tools and dealing with string searching and this kind of stuff. So, one last thing I want to do before we look at our palindrome code. I think we have time. Just quickly want to show you, if I take, where are those palindromes here? I'm going to take these palindromes here, and I'm going to say string array equals that followed by that. I'm building an array with all this stuff in it. And as you can see, I'm going to have to escape those quotes right there. Okay. All right. So here we go. Here is my, this little goofy thing we just did a second ago here. I'm going to change that to be the string right there. Okay. So now it's an array of a bunch of stuff. Let's get rid of this one where we're just testing it. Actually, no, we're going to leave that one. And we're going to do it for each loop. For each string as S, we're going to just do this. And we'll just change that to S. And there you go. Okay, every one of those, it pulled out all the punctuation on every one of those. And there's a lot of different ones, exclamation, question marks, all kinds of stuff, right? All right, let's put this in our, our actual palindrome code. It's super easy. And we have this function down here where we just pass it all this garbage right there. We're going to literally replace it with this line of code right here. Okay. So now, instead of saying phase equals string replace all this, we're going to say phase equals this phrase, I should say. And instead of string, we're using whatever phrase was passed in, right? So we pass into our palindrome function some phrase. We're going to take that phrase, compare it to this pattern, and then replace it with that portion of the pattern, and we don't need that stuff anymore. There you go. That's it. I mean, all that 
like an hour lecture just to get to this one thing. But now let's test it, okay? Now I did update the style sheet a little bit on this palindrome thing, but I didn't change any other content just because the style was kind of bugging me. All right, so I changed it to blue and I got rid of that weird background. But let's do like five palindromes. We'll do a search word that we're gonna search for cat in our palindromes. And here we go, let's do, I did, did, I, question mark, and we'll do tie it, semicolon, and we'll do madam, I'm Adam, we'll do race car, and we'll do senile felines. There we go, you ready? And they all come back true, and that means that the it pulled all the characters out and it tested them and they work just fine. So everything works seemingly fine. One last little thing I want to do, I did change a couple things in the style, and because of it, I want to make one little edit to the HTML, or the, actually the PHP here, and I want to get rid of facts about, and I just want to put the word there, so it's just the word that we're doing, just because it looks a little nicer. So now it just says tie it or whatever, right? I just look a little cleaner. But other than that, I, the CSS just looks a little better. But now we have, we spent an hour learning what the heck regular expression is, and then three seconds learning to apply it. But now you have in your arsenal a very, very powerful tool. This is used in every programming language, and on the command line, it's everywhere, okay? So any questions about what we covered today?